Hello and a very warm welcome to Rajya Sabha Television. You're watching The Big Picture with me, Frank Rausen Pereira. Well, Vice President M. Venkaya Naidu on Friday underlined the need for effective guidelines and laws to work out a revenue-sharing model between tech-based social media giants and the traditional media struggling to generate revenues. While the traditional print media has been sincerely enduring to adapt to the technological disruption by going online, it is struggling to come up with a viable revenue model. The Vice President said some countries were taking measures to ensure revenue sharing by the social media giants to the print media. We also need to take a serious look at this problem and come out with effective guidelines and laws with a consensus to enable print media get their share from the huge revenues of the technology giants, he emphasized. The Vice President said advertisement revenue has been a key for the viability of a media organization but in the mushrooming of the media outlets and the uh, sinking revenue pie, the traditional norms and principles of journalism are forced to be compromised with, a, uh, which is a seria, serious cons, uh, consequence. Now, in this edition of The Big Picture, we will analyze uh, the challenges and way forward for journalism. Joining me on the program today are Shekhar Iyer, senior journalist, Alok Verma, founder and editor-in-chief, News TV, and KG Suresh, senior journalist, as well as VC of Makanlal University. Thank you to all my guests for joining me on this edition of The Big Picture. Uh, Shekhar Ayer, I'd like to begin the program with you first. You know, as far as the media and journalism uh, as a whole in the country is concerned, it has been met with several challenges, especially the traditional form of uh, journalism. What are some of the biggest challenges that you see? Well, as uh, Vigayaji has today pointed out, uh, one of the biggest challenges is the growing lack of trust. That lack of trust is not only between the consuming audience and the content providers, but it is also within the content providers as to people who are creating the content, people who are processing the content, and people who are finally presenting the content. So I think the biggest challenge today is in terms of, you know, you have a news feed today, which is infinite personalization. There is so much of personalization and a lot of it is by choice also personal feed. You can pick and choose a particular news outlet for what you want. That is one. And second thing is this personalization has led to a situation where it is a self-made reality. See, all the time as uh, human beings, we are you know uh, facing a situation where there is something called absolute reality and there is a relative reality. Now, when I entered the profession more than 40 years ago, you know, I came with the belief that as journalists, our job is to look at facts. And I was trained in the agency journalism, which constant emphasis was that your view does not matter. What matters is what you see and what you report. And all the golden principles of journalism, the elementary principles of, you know, who, what, where, when, and how, and why, was considered as something very sacred mantra. And your audience, your reader, were, you know, were put in a pedestal where you as a, you were made to believe you are doing a public service. There was so much idealism infused into me as a young reporter. I would say that I would always uh, try to ensure that nowhere did my view of a particular thing ever affected in what I was presenting. But what has happened today is Right from the beginning, even the very young people who join, they are so full of views. They tend to look at things in the way they have been either, you know, dogmatized or made into believe this is the way it should be. And consequently, there is also a peer pressure on these youngsters to look at things in a particular way and to avoid things which do not fit with their self-created reality. Now, this is obviously affected. What I would say is, where content is the king, the content makers have become king. And number third point is, I think the golden principle that has survived through journalism since you know it has uh, been created as a profession is, facts are supposed to be sacred. Opinions are free. But the sacredness attached to facts has, has gradually been, you know, I would say, eroded in terms of commitment from the people who are in the profession. And so consequently, you have hard truths, you have free truth, you have post truth. And then the blurring line between activism and journalism and 
and the, the, the thing called the journalism as a tool for political advocacy, you know, all these things have got blurred in an environment which is highly politically polarized. So I feel that, you know, uh, along with this, you know, there is another crop of uh, uh, professionals who say they are doing fact-checking, fact-checkers. Now, even this fact-checking is also polarized because the fact-checkers do not check all the facts. They again check facts in a manner which suits their presentation of a reality which is created by them. Right. Right. So it's like looking at the ray of light through water and seeing how it is being bent and that's how it is really as far as journalism is concerned is what uh, Shekhar Iyer is suggesting. KG Suresh, I'd like to come to you and you know build on building on the points that, uh, that uh, has just been made uh, in the opening remarks. You know, let's also uh, understand it from this perspective. Media houses, would you say, and journalists or journalism itself in the country has been forced to change because the needs and demands of the audiences too have changed and the audience has become that much more needy now in this century. Look at things from a different perspective. You know, we need to understand a couple of things. One, the journalist is no more the decision maker, you know. Uh, we used to belong to a generation when our jobs were fixed, you know, they were permanent in nature. There were hardly few contract workers, uh, wage boards used to be there. You know, those days are gone. Today, even the wage board has now been made, uh, you know, has been diluted and now only the labor code is there. The Working Journalists Act has also, uh, uh, has also been finished. So, there is no job guarantee. So the journalist is basically working according to the whims and fancies of the owners. Let's accept it. So his own opinion, frankly speaking, doesn't matter much. Even though I totally agree with uh, Shekhar Da that he is, today's younger generation is highly opinionated. But in spite of that, do their opinions matter? It is the opinion of the Industrial houses, the corporate houses, which matter. Industrial the media outfits have become extensions of corporate interests. So to that extent, let us accept that the journalist is no more a decision maker unless you are talking about independent journalists, number one. Number two, let us also accept this, that the audience tastes have changed. The mindset and attitudes have changed. Today, if people are, you know, crying from the rooftops that every channel is in indulging in competitive nationalism, the fact is that there is a growing nationalist mood in the country. And somewhere, the television channels feel that we have to cater to this. Now, the question is whether the media should be molding public opinion or should it itself get molded by public opinion? Now, these are two things which we need to understand. So these are harsh realities which we need to understand. And third, let us also accept this fact that, you know, today we don't have a subscriber-based model. Even today, the media is heavily dependent on corporate support, on advertising support, on government support, and to expect such a media which is not being supported by the people at large to be independent, to be fair, to be neutral, I think we would be expecting too much. And right. last, yeah. but, last but not the least, it is also important to understand that media in terms of technology, today the content has got democratized. Today, people are looking for customized content. So it is no more the so-called mainstream media which is calling the shots. In fact, they have become followers. Whether it is hashtag, whether it is trending, it is the alternative media which is now occupying the mind space, particularly of the younger generation. So Absolutely. we need to understand this. But yes, facts remain sacred, uh, that continues to the, this day. Content is 
was and will always remain the king. Mm. So these these also are something which we need to accept. Absolutely. Okay, since we are here, now let me build on the points that uh, KG Suresh has just made and take that up with you, uh, Alok Varma. You know, uh, at some level, would you say that this is also a great opportunity really for everybody to come on board and it's not just limited to a few select uh, individuals and it's, it's an open field for everyone really to part ache in and those who have not evolved and who have failed to evolve are the ones who are perishing. The Frank is a continuous process and which we have been witnessing for the last several decades that every time a media evolves, a media technology evolves, media practices evolve, and media, you know, uh, the ways of working also evolve. So that's nothing that, you know, it is evolving for the first time. It has evolved in the in previous times also. It is evolving now also. But I think most important is that the blurring lines between the gatekeepers and the gate crashers are no longer there. In fact, we, when, we were, when we were growing up or we were practicing journalism, nobody taught us to be, you know, practicing W, five Ws or one H. It was part of the legacy where, where we learned all this from the seniors. And this legacy continued. Where is the legacy? Today, when some young journalist today joins, where is that legacy? What, is, what, is, what he looks up to? He looks up to nothing but sensationalism. He looks up to... Of, um, uh, activism. He looks up to some kind of a behavior in studios which is uh, not acceptable. There is no civility. There is no conversation. It is more of a war. It's like a war. When you when you look at the today's journalism, it's like a, it's like a war. There is no civility. Where is the public discourse? There is no public discourse. You are setting agenda. You are trying to pursue that agenda. And then the technology, what just now been mentioned by KG Suresh about the hashtags or, uh, you know, trending stories. I beg to differ with them that who are trending these stories? Who are putting these hashtags? Do you think these are the public discourses? No. There are the, there are the people who are behind putting the hashtags right from the morning itself. It is not that things are being uh, needed, but you are actually making them trend. We need to ask who is going to do this you know, who's going to stop it? Nobody has got, like Mr. Venkaya and I do, has, is, is right. Everybody is fighting a business model. No one has got the right business model. It's because print is on decline in the sense that the revenues are on decline. Print uh, numbers are growing up, but the revenues are declining because it's shifting to digital. And in digital, when it's shifting, where it is going? It is going to the top two companies, which is Facebook or the Google. Where are the publishers? The independent publishers can't survive. Because 80% of the revenue are being taken away by these two giants. I'm glad the vice president today has actually put the nail on it. He's simply trying to say the all giants or the technology giants who are taking away all the revenue need to share as it is being happening in Europe. It needs to be done in India. Unless it is done, journalism is going to die. Journalism is not going to survive. It's a great threat. We must be worried about it. Absolutely. These are some challenges, of course, that we are facing, the industry itself is facing, and we have to find some kind of a way out. Maybe the European model or the Australian model is something that we can apply as far as digital journalism is concerned. Um, Shekhar Ayer, since we are here, uh, how do we change what we don't like and what is ruining journalism as it stands right now? Well, I think the challenges are essentially on the, you know, two sides. One is the, the challenge posed by the technology. The other is the challenge posed by the current practices. And these practices are actually being constantly challenged by the advancement of technology. Now, very soon you may see in a couple of years, the FG may, uh, 5G coming in, you know, uh, into this country. And that 5G, introduction of 5G will also give a quantum leap the way the news can be, you know, uh, produced and uh, fed to uh, the the source. I mean, to the to the people whom it is meant. Now, they do, this would require because the requirements of journalism, no matter whatever is the technological changes or uh, you know age that come, the essence of journalism remains. That has not changed because, after all, what we are doing today, a particular incident, we let us say a particular news event, we are following. We do not rest with uh, the whatever we get from one particular source. We would like to check with another two, three sources. Because somewhere along the feeling is 
probably this is not the entire picture. When I say we, I am not talking as a practicing journalist. I am talking as a general common people. I have noticed that uh, most people are not prepared just to take one source for what it is. There is always a feeling, a question that comes, is it the truth? Is it, is it being sensationalized? Is it a fact? You know, these questions keep occurring in any event which, is, which gets, a, say, a, a, a plateau coverage. There is constant a feeling. So that again comes to the question. See, previously, I remember, say, in the late 70s, uh, when I used to uh, look at the impact that we made, because I was always told by my editors, great editors then, look, never underestimate the power of your word. Don't, I mean, you, you are absolutely right in underestimating yourself or avoiding overestimation of yourself. But never underestimate the power of the impact of your word, which means be careful. See, weigh, weigh in everything that you say, because that is what it must be. But what has happened today is, because the thing was, people, whatever they read, they believed it. Because they would say, if it has come in the newspapers, it must be true. But today what has happened is, it is not like that. People look at it as a kind of an entertainment. Okay, oh, this is also possible, that is also possible. Pata nahi, eh, no, 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 aise likh diya hoga. Because this is, or aise dikha diya hoga. See, the feeling, I think the threat to journalism is not so much as, you know, of course, te technology poses a challenge, but also from the fact, you are, you are the consumers. You know, I am forced to use the word consumers, which I would not have done four decades ago. Because it was never seen as a commodity, you know, which is produced and somebody consumed. But today it is seen as bad. So your consumers will have to trust you, will have to believe in what you are delivering. So that trust is an essential element. That trust would require us to go back to our ethics. That trust would, request, you know, would force us to go back to the professional commitment. Because today what has happened is in the kind of polarization that we are seeing among the media, among the media outlets and among the media personnel, Mm -hmm. What has happened is, and the peer pressure, we rather write for to please that peer community to which we are somehow affiliated. So we have to get out from that so that because ultimately this news business will stay because it is going to stay as long as the mankind is around. But right. what is needed is that any business model will ultimately depend on trust because just as in any other business, any other commodity that is being traded, the, the exchange is always because of the trust in quality and in uh, not just in quantity. So similarly, I think we need to focus on quality. When it comes to quality, we need to see that how much of it is self-created reality, how much is relative reality, and how much are we trying to provide to our, uh, our, uh, to our viewers and readers and our consumers of our content, the absolute reality. And sure. that would require to, you know, uh, wade through areas where, you know, it's a, I would call it a sharp razor walk in the sense that there will be situations where, you know, it will appear like advocacy, hmm. activism, and in between you will have to reclaim that space for professionals. Absolutely. So trust and quality, how do we build on that, KG Suresh? Uh, because, you know, this is something that we've been trying to do for a while now, but somehow we've not been able to achieve that if the government steps in, then, you know, there's a certain section which says that government is interfering with freedom of speech. Self-regulation really doesn't seem like it has worked. So what is the answer? The answer is media literacy and media awareness. You know, let me, I mean, uh, uh, you see, whatever you may say, whether somebody is manipulating the hashtags or whatever, let us face it. How many people are reading the newspapers? How many people are watching the television? It is today, every political party is, every, uh, you know, co consumer brand is trying to woo the younger generation through the social media. So they are setting the agenda. So it is very important. Look at the penetration, proliferation of mobile phones in this country. Like anything. Look at the kind of subscribers, followers that social media platforms have. We are among the, you know, in the, if you look at the global figures, we are, you know, in the top list, whether it be YouTube, whether it is WhatsApp, whether it is you name it. 
and compare it with the statistics for television viewership or newspaper readership so we need to understand that you know today when we are talking about media you know we we have to accept that it is the digital space that is where the people are you may accuse that of anything fake content disinformation misinformation let us accept it now coming to your question about building trust and credibility you know i think that it is important that once people become me i have always been advocating that media literacy has to be an integral part of the school curriculum you know media is too important to be left to media persons alone it is the fourth pillar of democracy you have to sensitize every citizen about media media consumption unless you you know uh, create awareness about that and they become they make enlightened choices so the way you have enlightened electorate for a powerful dynamic democracy you need to have enlightened readership enlightened viewership and enlightened listenership this enlightened audience is very much important so that they can make enlightened choices so that media literacy is going to play and they will they will no amount of regulation can you know bring about that change unless you make a choice right you know it is the people who will have to to make a choice and in that direction media universities like ours media organization like yours media you know professionals uh, like the esteemed uh, panel which is there they all will have to contribute because at the end of the day if the credibility is lost then everything is lost Absolutely. and media houses the earlier they realize it the better for them because otherwise we are going into an era where television has become a spectacle and print has been marginalized and then you can imagine who is going to rule the roost so it is True. important that the credibility is restored and to that extent they should also realize it they should not go by the temporary phenomena i would say of some revenue generation and some trp ratings i think they should look beyond the profit motives and look at the larger look at the big picture you know and then only i think things will improve right alok verma what's the best way forward i want to point out a few things uh, reuters brings out uh, every year a report on the uh, you know on the trust of the news and how it is declining for the last 3 years i have been accessing this report and in the 2020 the globally the news i mean trust in news has declined to only just 7 to 8% i can quote you that if television has become a spectacle as kg has said print impact is declining digital is going to stay that i want to tell you a few things which are going to very startling in india we are still have not really reached the entire country we have haven't mapped the country we do not have the independent news uh or you know platforms for each and every city in this country in the covid we have seen already how many publications have closed down how many digital startups have folded up thousands of journalists and you know people working in the organization have lost their jobs and there is a creation of news desert when i say about news desert means there are large many places in the country who are unrepresented from where there is no reporting there is no news coming in in those places there is no coverage you see the situation is so pretty bad because on one side we are talking of the trust on the other side is the quality there is a quality issue people don't want to pay if we will don't want to pay what is the le option left out is to go to the advertiser when you go to the advertiser it is the marketing research agency which which tell you what content to be driven so there is a catch 22 situation i believe the government has to step in in certain ways because this social media so called low social media monster is become so free for people because it doesn't take you to be a journalist it doesn't take you to be uh, you know any 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 qualified person you can post any damn thing without without verification as i said that they there instead of you know people becoming you know gatekeepers we are becoming gate crashers mr shekhar has just now mentioned there is a complete credibility you know issue of the credibility of news because the today's mindset is the lot of young people uh, kg is very right on one saying that media literacy there is a huge media illiter illiteracy in the country 
WhatsApp has become the university. You just, whatever appears in the WhatsApp, it is being taken as a truth because people cannot really find the way or they have no filtration where they can, you know, actually uh, distinguish between the fake news and the general news. This is a situation. And people give two hoots. So long it is pandering to their interest, so long it is pandering to their what they want to read, they don't want to even actually believe whether it is fake or it is uh, it is real. So the situation is pretty bad, Frank. I think there is a need for a lot of senior journalists, a lot of youngsters, uh, practitioners like KG, who is also a vice chancellor of a university who speaks a lot about you know credibility of news. It's a job for all of us to actually set up certain cardinals and therefore we can save journalism from dying. If you don't, Mr. KG, uh, Mr. Iyer may be thinking that the journalism would have survived. I'm very sorry to say journalism already on the ventilator. Okay, all right. On that note then, I'll call it a wrap on this edition of The Big Picture. Let's hope that journalism survives. Let's hope that we, th that we rise like uh, like the phoenix from, phoenix from the ashes and uh, we take this great profession forward in the right spirit as well. It's uh, up to all of us, of course, here on this panel to do that and each one of us should do our bit to save journalism. With that, it's a wrap. Thank you to my guests for joining me on the program and putting things into perspective for us. That's it from me. See you again next time.